between the period of 2000 and 2008, and 2008 because that's when the recession started, so just we have a clean look, uh, the US lost something like 5.8 million jobs in manufacturing. Uh, if you look at those jobs that we lost, uh, only at most 20% of them were due to what you might call globalization, so offshoring and outsourcing. Whereas the rest of them, uh, which is the majority, 80% of them, uh, can be explained by looking at the effects of technology and the other key culprit, which is what happens to demand. And we know that one of the things that happened in that period between 2000 and 2008 is that the, the demand growth for the outputs of manufacturing coming out of the U.S. actually fell. So that was one of the big drivers for what then happened to employment, where you had productivity growth without the demand growth, uh, employment tends to suffer. There are a couple policy implications that come out pretty quickly. One is that over the longer term, we can't rely exclusively on economic growth alone to solve all of our employment problems. Now in the short term, economic growth is absolutely the best way to get the hiring engine kicked in again. The robots, the androids, the artificial intelligence can't do everyone's job yet by a long shot. So the right way in the short term to grow the economy, to grow employment, is to grow the economy. But over the longer term, it honestly feels to me like we might be in a situation where enterprises can grow and thrive and not need nearly as much labor as they've needed historically. Certainly, education will help. We know that uh, there's a big gap between what most economies need and what the educational training systems create to meet those needs. But I would argue even that's not enough uh, to get. So while I think it's comfortable uh, for policymakers, and in fact indeed correct, to say let's focus on innovation and let's focus on entrepreneurship and let's solve education, those are correct, but they may not be complete answers to how we tackle employment. So think about uh, what Uber and, and, and its like and its kin are doing. It's making it possible for people who have cars to suddenly turn that into an, a potential income generating opportunity. Think about what uh, 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 models and businesses like Airbnb are doing, uh, where people can then use assets that they have like their houses or their flats as ways to generate income. Those are just examples of ways where if you think about it as an income generation question as opposed to any a full-time employment problem, you expand the possibilities.